as Jahanara got the title of Shah Begum, she got the rights to interfere directly into the kingdom's affairs. For this reason, she was also called Begum Sahib, while other princesses were called by their names. The royal seal of the emperor, which used to be with Mumtaj Mahal, now belonged to Jahanara. She now had the authority to make decisions regarding people's lives. She saved many people from the royal decrees, death sentences and atrocities of the rich. Shah Jah, pleased with Jahanara's intelligence and governance skills, honored her with the title of Sahibat al-Zamani, which meant Lady of the Era. Jahanara's status in the Sultanate was so great that she had built herself a palace outside the fort of Agra, in which she lived gracefully like the Sultans. Because of this, the Begums and the princesses of Mughal Haram, who were jealous of Jahanara, used to spread slanderous rumours about Jahanara and did not hesitate to call her king's mistress. Even when Shah Jah moved his capital from Agra to Delhi, Jahanara built herself a separate palace from the royal palaces in the Red Fort so that the Amir Umrav of the Sultanate could meet her easily. By the time Shah Jah was the emperor, Jahanara was the most powerful woman of the Mughal Sultanate. The result of Jahanara's effort was that Shah Jah had declared Dara who had not won a single war as his successor, named him Wali Ahad out of his four sons. Ever since Shah Jah became emperor, he had given most of his wealth to Jahanara. For this reason, Jahanara was the richest in the Mughal Sultanate after the emperor. On 6 February 1628, when Shah Jah became king, on the same day, Shah Jah provided Jahanara with 1 lakh Iranian coins of gold, 4 lakh Mughal coins of gold and Jagis with an annual income of 6 lakh rupees. Due to this, Jahanara became very rich. When Mumtaj Mahal died in AD 1631, Mumtaj Mahal had 1 lakh Irani coins of gold, 6 lakh Mughal coins of gold and Jagis with an annual income of 10 lakh rupees. Shah Jah gave half of the property of Mumtaj Mahal to Shah Begum Jahanara and distributed the remaining half of it to the rest of the children of Mumtaj Mahal. Apart from this property, Jahanara had many villages, havelis, gardens, palaces, etc., from which she used to earn a good income every year. Governments such as Achrol, Farjahara, Bachol, Safapura and Duhara were also in the personal control of Jahanara. The port of Surat and the Pargana of Panipat were also her Jagir. The ships of Jahanara travelled from Surat to the Red Sea, situated between the continents of Asia and Africa, to conduct trades of indigo, cotton clothes and spices. Ships of British and Dutch merchants used to take goods from India to Europe from this Surat port. Jhanara was the mistress of this port, so the taxes collected on this cargo made her even richer. This money was used by Jhanara to help the poor and build mosques. She used to send rice to Mecca and Medina every year through this port, where it was distributed among the poor. Jahanara fully supported Dara Shriko in the war of succession between Shah Jah's sons in AD 1658. But Dara Shriko was defeated by Aurangzeb on account of his fate, deception of brothers and his ineligibility to rule. Aurangzeb killed all three of his brothers, captivated his father, and snatched Jahanara's title and transferred it to Roshanara, who favoured Aurangzeb in the war of succession. At this time, Jahanara was 44 years old. When Aurangzeb captivated Shah Jah, 
Jahanara renounced all her opulence and accepted to remain as a prisoner in the Red Fort. How could she forget the days when her father left his kingdom and wept while sitting at the bedside of his ailing daughter? See in the sequel, Roshanara defeated Jahanara.